Okay, question number 16. This is probably one of the hardest questions, with, if not the hardest question on this homework set, because you have to do um, two different substitutions in order to solve the equation. So we're going to talk about that. It says a ball is thrown directly downward with an initial speed of 8.2 meters per second from a height of 29.8 meters. After what time interval does it strike the ground? So what we've been given is we we've been given the initial the initial velocity, uh, and it says it was thrown downward, so it's going to be a negative initial velocity of 8.2 meters per second, and it says um, from a height, so it's it's traveling downward, so it's going to have a negative um, a negative displacement, a negative change of location, change of x, negative displacement. Um, however, you want to call, however you want to say it, of negative 29.8 uh, meters. And the last thing it gives, it, well, so it gives us that. And what is not stated but implied, because it's, we're implying that it's done on Earth and that air resistance is negligible, so we have an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And so we need to set up an equation that can uh, based that can, I can use um, displacement and acceleration and initial velocity to solve for time. So how do I do that? Um, so we, we first we have to ask ourselves um, if we knew what the time was, how would we solve for one of these other factors? And so the other factor that um, I picked in here because it's the I think it's the easiest route to go is to solve for um, distance or change in location or displacement however you want to what are you going to call it so um, how do we typically solve for for uh, displacement so we, we usually say that the average velocity times the time equals our displacement or our change in location uh, the other way we can the, the problem with this is what is average velocity so we got to be more precise so we average velocity is the final velocity plus the initial velocity divided by 2 so we can take that times the time it should equal the change in position the change in location the displacement and so um, but what we what we've been given in this is the initial velocity and we've been given the change in location we don't know the final velocity so how do we find final what what kind of formula can give me final velocity well there there's one that i know um, you start off with your your final velocity you can find that out by knowing what you're you're starting off so if i'm running down the street i'm start out going two miles an hour and after some point in time i start accelerating I would take my initial velocity plus my acceleration um, that's supposed to be a plus plus my acceleration times my time and that would be equal my final velocity so I can I can choose to go one way or the other I can choose to plug this in right here and only solve for the time variable that way or I can choose to solve for my final velocity by solving for the time variable down here, um, which is what I'm going to do. This is how the textbook shows it. So this is how I'm going to show it just for um, simplicity's sake. So if I solve for time right here, that would get Vf minus Vi, that's supposed to be an I, over A, over acceleration, equals T. And then I can take this equation right here, and I can throw it into there. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've got uh, average velocity times time uh, equals my displacement. Well, I, so I'm going to say average velocity. Um, you're going to see how this works. Average velocity times, instead of putting time there, I'm going to put what equals time, which is Vf minus Vi over A. Vf minus Vi over A. 
and this should equal my displacement. Now what you might notice right away is we have a difference of two squares type of problem. So if I multiply, if I FOIL this out, what I'm going to get is VF squared plus VI squared. I'm going to get it over 2A. And this should equal my displacement. Well, I know what, now I can start plugging in numbers, because I know what my, my initial velocity is, and I know what my acceleration is, and the only thing I don't know is my final velocity, so I can plug in some numbers and I can solve. So VF, final velocity squared, plus 8.2 squared, divided by 2 times 9.2 2 times, let me make sure this is negative, 2 times, it don't matter when I square it, but 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and this is meters per second, this is meters per second, equals my change in, in distance, and that's in meters. So, um, with that, I can, let me go ahead and put in my calculator, 8.2 times 8.2, so this is going to equal 67 0.24, and I can put in uh, 2 times negative 9.8, which is negative 19.6. So what I have right now is I have my final velocity squared plus 67.24 divided by uh, negative 19.6 equals, and my change in location, if you remember from the problem, is 29.8 meters. Now I need to solve this problem, so I can multiply both sides by 19.6, and I get VF, final velocity squared, plus 67.24 equals, um, and by the way, this is a negative 29.8, so uh, just so we keep our accounting right. Uh, so this is going to equal 584.08, because the negative times the negative, um, it cancels each other out and becomes positive. And so right now what I have is um, sort of a quadratic equation. It's not really a quadratic equation because I only have one term here, so I will be able to just square root this whenever I'm done and find the answer. But uh, VF squared equals, and I, I subtract 67 from both sides, um, 67.24, and I get 516.84. And actually, right now, I'm just realizing that I, I did make one mistake. Um, in my different in my foiling, this is going to be a negative right here. So these two are this is going to vi times vf positive is going to cancel out with vf times vi negative. But so I'm going to have a positive vf and a negative vi. So vf squared minus vi squared. So I've got to come back here and change this to a negative. And so it, it's not going to be um, um, subtracting. So I'm going to have to add 67 to both sides, which when I do that, I'm going to get VF squared equals 651.32. Um, so anyhow, just be careful when you, when you go through these steps, make sure you think about it. I didn't catch it until it, it just occurred to me as I'm going through this um, to go and, and, and change that. So um, you, essentially you can take the square root of both sides and you can find your final velocity, which is going to be um, 25.52, 25.52 meters per second. So my final velocity equals 25.52 meters per second. Okay, what did that get me? 
Um, it, it asked for the time. I didn't get the time out of that. What I got was the final velocity. So I have, again, my graph. Um, here's my x-axis. Here's my y-axis. So at some point, it, uh, someone throws something downward at 8 meters. This is time zero. Someone throws something downward at 8 meters per second. It accelerates at 9.8 meters per second, and it stops and hits the ground. This final velocity we now know is, is negative 25.52, because when we do the square root, it's the absolute value, so it's plus or minus over here. Um, so this is negative 25.52. We want to find the area in this in this space. So the, here's a rectangle part that um, would be equal to um, the uh, the uh, velocity here, at which the velocity was negative 8.2 uh, meters per second times the time. Now, and then this this triangle would be equal to um, eight, uh, 25.52 minus this negative 8.2, so um, 25.552 minus the negative 8.2 would be equal to the, a height of 17.32, so 17.32 negative times times the uh, times one half of the time, so base times height divided by two. And if I add these two equations together, I should get something equal to 29. Uh, what was the uh, what was the 29.8? So negative. Let me go to this next screen. Negative 8.2 t. I don't have to put those in parentheses. Uh, plus negative 17, negative 17.32 t over 2 equals 29.8 uh, 29 8 meters. So that's what the area should equal. Now we just have to solve it and find out if it does equal that. So I can simplify this really quick by dividing the 17 by 2. And so it's going to be negative 8.2t plus negative 8.66t equals this 29.8. And so I, I can combine my like terms. I add my negatives equals uh, negative 8.2. So that's negative 16.86t equals 29.8. Now the last step is to divide both sides by 16.86. And remember, this is a, I haven't been consistent. This is a negative 29, this is a downward direction. So we're, we're saying it's a negative, uh, a negative uh, displacement, not a negative distance because that don't make sense, but it's a negative displacement. So t equals negative 29.8 divided by negative 16.86, and that equals 1.77 seconds. And that is your answer. It took 1.77 seconds to get there. It reached a maximum velocity of 25 meters per second. It accelerated at 9.8 meters per second downward. It took less than two seconds to make almost 30 meters.